I was half watching the zombie box recently with Fox News on, sandwiched between the gnashing of teeth over trans inclusion in the military and how many times a day that Trump would use Twitter to publicly bitch-slap Jeff Sessions, there was brief mention of another story. I didn't catch all the details, but it was something about the president and the Department of Education and how they were getting out there to encourage young girls to pursue studies in STEM. It's certainly nothing new. For years now, the Victim Identity Task Force has been wailing about so few women being theoretical physicists and astronomers. They have been, often with missionary zeal, trying to tackle the alleged problem like they do all other problems in life, by blaming men. And to be sure, it does not surprise me at all that Trump is showboating his way through a dog and pony show of girl power, ready to proclaim that women can do anything men can do, and do it better, and do it in heels. That kind of sex-based pandering comes with the territory. Of course, the screwball narrative, the one where women can do it all with an appropriate amount of federal intervention and money, plays out in full public view. Meanwhile, we are also putting a penis on everything that feminists imagine is in women's way, hindering supposedly powerful women and forcing them to wilt like sun-parched buttercups before they can revolutionize science and technology. To explain how this happens, they give us a staggering array of factors that hold women back. They hold these things out as the reasons women lag in STEM. In other words, they give us their bullshit excuses. Because sexual harassment, they say. Because teasing, lack of encouragement, stereotypes, and childcare needs. Because men are too competitive and because they marginalize women you even still get the occasional because patriarchy. I have it all linked in the low bar if you need to refresh yourself on old bullshit. Personally, I'm tired of the false virtue-laden feigned panic over our girls supposedly slipping through the cracks. It is pointless. Women aren't slipping through the cracks. They are diving for those cracks head first, aimed at the biggest cracks they can find getting away from STEM as hard and fast as they can. And their choices are entirely rational. You see, it's no piece of cake to get women, or anyone else for that matter, to get all giddy about investing their lives in something they can't do, and that most of those who can don't want to and never will. Trying to coax girls into STEM, with some notable exceptions, is like trying to coax them into men's professional football. I realize how offensive it sounds to some people, but once you clear away all the panicked lies, walking dead statistics, and other crazy attempts to rationalize the absence of women in STEM, the biggest obstacles to women entering STEM are a lack of interest and a lack of intellect. Two factors, no doubt, positively correlated. Let's splash some water in our faces and get a nice clean shave with Occam's razor as we look at the abundantly obvious reason that women don't excel or even compete with men in the area of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, better known as STEM. This graph was plotted by Dr. Randy Olson, a senior data scientist at the University of Pennsylvania. I have the source linked in the low bar. On the graph and using data from U.S. college students, Olson plotted the various college majors, gender ratios in those majors, and average IQs. On the far right, we see a cluster of the arts and humanities majors. We also see that the students in that area are both predominantly female and predominantly in the lower IQ range of all students who were part of the measurement. Healthcare, psychology, and education majors rest at the bottom of the education barrel intelligence wise, with social work unsurprisingly at the bottom of the bottom, with the highest density of women and the lowest intelligence of any major represented on the chart. Overall, the lower in intelligence we go, the more women dominate. As we move left on the chart towards STEM majors, something else happens. 
we see a clear, positive correlation with higher intelligence. And not just a little intelligence, but a whopping increase, around 25 to 30 percent. We also see a lot more men and a lot fewer women. Olson ventures to think he understands the reason for the disparity which he describes in gender stereotypical language. My initial thought was that this all made sense, he says. Women are widely known to be more socially inclined and nurturing than men, so we would expect to see them dominate fields that heavily involve people. Unquote. I think his unsupported opinion on this is highly questionable. Women are indeed widely believed to be more nurturing than men. But of course, the world believes a ton of things about women that are pure bullshit. My opinion on this, which is just as anecdotally based as Olson's, is that women are far from cornering the market on nurturing, apart from the case of nurturing small children as a possible exception. But that is really a side point secondary to the effort to explain women's absence in STEM. Olson recognizes this, too, as he goes on to question his own flawed stereotype by asking, and I quote, How does that explain the drastic IQ differences between male and female-dominated fields if the average man and woman have the same IQ? He goes on to explain that the IQ scores on his graph are estimated based on SAT scores, linking us to research that supports a strong correlation between the two. This affords him the opportunity to examine the intelligence difference with both the verbal and quantitative SAT scores. As we can see here, using the verbal SAT scores alone on the chart obliterates the correlation between the major's gender ratio and the score. This would imply a nearly complete closing of the gender intelligence gap, at least with verbal intelligence, which is the ability to analyze information and solve problems using language-based reasoning. It also calls into question one of those things that, in Olson's terms, the world just knows about women, that they have superior language skills to men. Well, not according to his chart, they don't. One look at it, and you can see it's a complete wash. This is a very interesting point that I think Olson neglected to mention in his effort to make sure women understood he wasn't calling them dumb. Not that it stopped any butthurt women from complaining about that very thing in the comments. His final chart didn't help. As you can see, when you plot the chart with quantitative SAT scores, which generally measure the individual's capacity to solve problems with components that can be specified in detail and that can be analyzed empirically and logically for instructional research and measurement purposes. In other words, the type of intelligence needed to excel in STEM, which is a type of intelligence you are overwhelmingly more likely to find in men than women. I know. This kind of intelligence is sexist. It picks on women and hangs on to its membership card in the boys' club. It's an instrument of the patriarchy because of reasons. And we need the President of the United States, a bona fide patriarch if there ever was one, to join the rest of the world in delusional solutions in order to fix the problem. Now, do I think we should try to reach girls with encouragement to enter STEM studies and careers? Well, I hate to say this, especially since I just asked the question, but it is a really, really stupid question in the long run. And it is embarrassing to have to say it, but of course we should be reaching out to all students at all times with encouragement to pursue whatever their interests and aptitudes allow. You don't need President Trump. You don't need social justice outrage. And you don't need a boogeyman to falsely saddle with the blame for whatever disparity you imagine exists. We have legions of teachers, from grade school to graduation, who can provide all the inspiration needed. And the fact is that almost all of them are women. If female students aren't already feeling inspired to pursue STEM, 
If, despite all manner of totally ridiculous claims of discrimination and a slew of so-called women's empowerment outreach efforts, they are still lining up for an arts degree, then shut up about STEM and accept the choices they are making. For fuck's sake, listen to me. Paul Elam scolding the world about respecting women's choices. Yet just the same, here I am. This whole fiasco about women in STEM is the result of one of feminism's many fatal flaws. The movement obsesses on demonizing men and masculinity, then turns right around and measures women's worth by how much they're like men. Only every time women can't measure up, the blame is instantly put on the men they're trying to compete with. It's enough to make you think that feminists are the kind of people who score in single digits on quantitative SATs. And then again, that's hardly a surprise. And that is it for today's talk. I want to give a shout out to all my patrons with a message of gratitude for your support of my work. As always, I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.